waiting for you if you had to leave I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea I We are two crazies from South Africa. That is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck everything and now we are living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. We managed to make it past Barbados. Barbados is here. And as you can see now, we manage, we will manage to pass to the east of Barbados. Over there. But even now the wind is turning, turning us so that we cannot get past Barbados and we will need to tack somewhere there. We are swinging every now and then look like now we to the west of Barbados and that is a problem if we check the weather here see so we're going to get a strong current this current here is turning like this and that's going to be already tough for us it would be easier to come here but look at this current here and then here so if we get too close here this one is going to kill us so we basically had two, two options, either go windward or go leeward side. So let's start with the leeward side, positive and negative. So the positive there would be our angle would be far more comfortable. We would be doing greater speed. So we will get to our final destination much quicker. And that is about as far as the positive goes, but now the negative. Okay, when you, if you look at the wind angle then approaching Barbados, as we reach Barbados, we're going to be completely in the shadow of the island, which will most likely result in us having to put on engines. So when we round Barbados at the bottom, if you look at the wind angle, we'd be so much closer to the wind, which will make it practically impossible to sail. Um, we would, that would be just a lot of tacking going on. We'd be banging into those horrible, horrible waves. And um, another thing is we'd be much closer to the, the big current coming our way so that would not be a very comfortable ride at all. Yeah, so I guess you guessed it by now so we just decided it would have been way more uncomfortable to do the leeward side than the windward side so we passed Barbados on the windward side. But the rigging took a beating of note that was one of the nights I don't want to repeat very soon again. So now even with the slightest bump they vibrating and I shuddering not good I hope they last and I can feel they are very very loose <laughs> if I'm shaking like this I might pull off the mast it's not a good thing so I hope we can make Suriname and, and we put now the autopilot on, on performance mode so that we that it steers much much more on, on course. We put the spinner, we tighten the spinnaker earlier and also the topping lift. So hopefully with the spinnaker earlier and the topping lift there's some additional additional uh, support we are still bouncing up and down but at least we seem to found a rhythm we found our groove <laughs> yeah we still have a 1.5 knot current against us um, so we're going according to the gps very slow but according to the speed log very fast but we're going forward very slowly and just slow. look at this. Space. Pietro is making. Is making curry in the middle of the freaking Caribbean. Can you believe? <laughs> All of these. There's a lot of spices. And even there is spices. Look at all of these spices. Wow. Yeah, is the big secret, the big curry secret spice. This is a home brew blend. I just take all the spices that I like and I mix it up 
in this jar and whenever it gets about half full I add some more spices and I mix it through so there is cardamom in, there is bay leaves in, there is curry, there is paprika, there is cumin, there is you name it, a bit of everything in here red Thai curry, chicken curry with veggies smell it, smell it, smell it <laughs> mm. velvet mesh and that's all handmade <laughs> real potatoes, yeah. not powder potatoes. Yes, I hate that. It is just not nice. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. So refract, but there's some veggies. Green stuff. Green stuff. Oh, it's now yellow. Happened again. Um, one advantage of sitting here and at the helm is that we've got all the alarms also coming here to the to the helm station. I just saw this alarm going off, coming on. So and that means the bulge pump is working. That means there's water in the bulge. Yep, there is water. Now the question is where does it come from? Okay, this is the... Oh. There is definitely signs of water. is the alarm. You can switch it on here. So let's drain some of the water manually. That light is back on again <coughs> and it just means that even after I emptied it manually the bulge I used the manual pump to pump it out, the water out. It's again at the level where the float switch is switching on so I have a feeling it's not that small leak there's a much bigger problem but it is now guess what time it is it's quarter to four it's always around three o'clock 3.45 <laughs> these things always happen at three o'clock normally at Petrus watch but now she reported this light. Oh, oh. Sheesh. We have a bigger problem. The water is coming out of that hole, but like a lot. And that hole is coming from the peak. If the water is coming from that side there, we need to unpack a lot of things here in order to look into the peak. Because a lot of things is stored there. And I think we just need to check it out and make sure that the the pump is, is going okay and then oh, and then fix it when we we get to our destination. The catamarans do sail differently than a mono. Catamarans don't heal. Technically we do heal around four to six degrees. So it's not much, but it does mean that this big sail it's pretty much upright the whole time, except for that four to six degrees. Which makes the very big difference in the wind. So all the wind that's coming in, 
the sail will face the full wind and that's why we reef earlier than monos. See that our Genoa is full out so that Genoa is not reefed but if you look forward you will see and I can feel it so that is it's, it's a little bit different than watching on the video but you can see that the nose is dipping quite deep look and stays there for a while and every time when it comes out it's very difficult to get the bow out and that's because of that big Genoa so that big Genoa every time when we see so lifts the bow out it's actually catching a lot more wind and then either goes forward or keep the bows under water sometimes we even reef a little bit earlier than normal just to make sisu lighter so that the house is not pressed so deep in into the water there's big swells coming this way big swells coming this way and then there's all these little ones in between which is making a very difficult ride for a catamaran and we don't really pick up speed if we do pick up speed above six knots and we can do that by just turning a little bit more but at this moment we want to get to our target there so I cannot I cannot fall off the wind too much otherwise we will need to tack at the end of this long passage and in this sea I'm not really happy to tack look at this way nice and big very big but anyway so if I fall off the wind catamaran so much faster not much much faster than monos but we do pick up a lot of speed because we don't heal so let's go and fill the Genoa and we see whether we are better off we are already a couple of days at, on passage and this was not one of those passages that you can say you had a good sail <laughs> And it is pouring with rain. And all of a sudden, the true went from 12 to 20, 22. But now Sisu is getting a wash and the sails are getting a wash. What a pleasure. Uh, last night, the ceiling dropped off. Also, that anchor remote over there got somehow untangled and started unwinding the chain or dropping the chain by itself. So lesson learned, always switch off the windlass at the windlass breaker. But also you see that dark shape there, that is the window from there. And this is the sea outside just going all directions let me show you guys direction no <laughs> rhythm nothing so it is it was one crazy night very crazy night yeah so another thing that happened um on that trip that has never ever ever happened before is i woke up one morning and um coming up the stairs I, well the first thing you see is the ceiling and i saw it was sopping wet and then we discovered the water came through this false floor. It was such a gush that came through and it splattered against the ceiling inside the main saloon. Hectic. We are reefed on the main on reef one and also the Genoa on reef one. And it's 
because we, our parent wind speed constantly goes above 25, 26. So we normally reef the main at, at 20 knots, a parent wind, and the Genoa at 25. So we are reefed and <laughs> we still fly. <laughs> Look at that, 7. My God, gosh, goodness. And it is pretty much into the wind. approaching the Suriname River now we still have 146 miles to go so we will have one more night like this and it is really it was a tiresome journey this um, it can it can get over I think we, it should now be done with it is like bashing the whole time Sea state is not, not well. <laughs> the main and it is only the Genoa that's out because we need to make sure that we arrive there at the mouth of the river you see we're going to get there too early because we cannot arrive there at night and also there's a lot of sandbanks and debris that's coming out of the river and also the tide is only going to be ready for us low tide is eight o'clock so we need to do something to get there just after eight and to be ready to go into the river when the tide turns it's already quarter to seven Past eight, I think we're going to keep, keep it here. 